Hi crafters, it's Karen and I have a process video that I wanted to share. I created this canvas and I wanted to share the process with you. It's a 9 by 12 canvas. It's a good size and I start with using these red coral gorgeous napkins as my base. I found these at Tuesday morning and I just I just love that print in those colors and uh, right there just like that um, it just matches my my kitchen those colors <clears throat> so I, I could have just slapped the napkin on the canvas and hung, hung it up like that and it, <laughs> it would have looked so nice in my kitchen but um, but yeah that wasn't my idea <laughs> So I'm going to adhere my napkin with this Deco Art Matte Medium, which is, you know, gel medium. And I'm just putting on a good layer of the matte medium and laying my uh, napkin very carefully over it. I'm not too concerned about wrinkles and bubbles because obviously that will just add to the texture of the piece, you know. Um, I like that the sides can overlap uh, so that the sides are um, covered. Most of the sides are covered. And you see how, how pretty that is, that na napkin? Just gorgeous. Just folding it over and using the matte medium. I wasn't going to do this as a voiceover, you know, do a voiceover, a narration, because most of what you see in the video is pretty self explanatory, the steps that I take. However, I know a lot of you have told me that they miss my voiceovers and that they do pre prefer the voiceovers. So, um, that's what I'm doing and I included music for those awkward silences <laughs> so I'm, I'm liking the way this this looks as my background and obviously um, with the different colors that I incorporate in elements and elements and such um, you know, not a lot of this shows up in the end result. Some of the red coral does. Uh, I don't know if you could see it in the photos, but some of it does. See, doesn't that doesn't that look so pretty? I could have just hung that right up on my wall straight away, just like that, and I would have been happy. And Joe would have said, "Wow, that's great." <laughs> but uh, yeah, that wasn't my idea. So I'm adding my deco art gesso, just to. Uh, for one thing to prepare um, you know this layer to so that I can add the other mediums that I have in mind gelatos and such and also to help fade that the coral and all the um, you know the picture of the napkins into the background now this is my mermaid <laughs> I know she's a little squirrely but I really learned to love her <laughs> It took me like seven, uh, really seriously, seven tries sketching out a mermaid. And there was no way I would be able to do her her head or her face. I'm just, I just am not that good at drawing. So I knew I wanted her to be, you know, swimming up out of the canvas. So um, after my seventh try of sketching out my mermaid, I... I just went with this, <laughs> went with this one. <laughs> so then um, I drew her out and then I traced her onto my watercolor paper and now I'm using my gelatos. I end up using some distress inks and my distress markers and uh, I believe I might have even used some Prima watercolor, or not Prima watercolor, um, Prima oil pastel crayons you know to color her up all of the products that I used I will put in the description box 
I'm using my distress markers to color her skin, give it a nice peachy tone. <clears throat> and see, I, I did make her, her tail greenish with little hints of blue and some definite hints of orange and pink just to set her apart from the water a little bit. And, uh, yeah, and I did some stamping there with my Kaiser Craft stamps. I didn't go through the whole process of creating my mermaid because I felt like um, the video was more about creating the canvas itself. So here I'm going to use these texture stamps from Tim Holtz uh, to add to my background. <clears throat> Not too much, just a little bit so that there would be some um, hints of black that those are like a crackle look in the background. And after everything is said and done, you know, all of this becomes very, very subtle. It just adds to the layered details of the canvas. And now I'm, I'm going to use these Sheena stamps. I love these stamps and I haven't used them near enough. I really need to practice using them and uh, find a, a project where I can really highlight them. But for this particular canvas, I used um, I used them, but not in a way where they would really show up. I decided not to make them a focal image. So now I'm going in with some more gesso, <clears throat> and I'm just uh, creating this line for myself so that I know where I want my stenciling to go and where I want my mermaid to, to layer. And I decided to use this Teresa Collins modeling paste, and uh, I've got this at Hobby, uh, not Hobby Lobby, I'm sorry, at Joanne at one time when it was on clearance. I think a lot of us had purchased it, and I like it. However, I noticed that it has a really strong scent. Let me know below if, if you've gone to use this modeling paste and you um, got that strong sm scent to it. it that like uh, the way E6000 smells or rubber cement, that type of chemical um, scent to it. It was kind of disturbing. I'm not sure if I want to use it again. As far as the paste part of it, I liked it. It didn't hold up or keep its dimension as well as like the Liquitex uh, modeling paste, but, but this did the job for this particular project. And it did go on really creamy, but like I said, it didn't hold its dimension. When I went after it, everything was said and done and it dried, um, it didn't have a lot of dimension. So now it's dried and I'm using my Prima Oil Pastels to accentuate these circles. I love that bubble um, stencil that I used. Uh, I showed it in a recent haul and I'm just going to use it all the time for everything because it is so cool. I've wanted it for the longest time and look at the effect it gives. Just really cool. So I'm using these oil pastels. Um, I shared the colors with you a moment ago in the camera. I can't... Parisian green? I'm not sure. But at any rate, I wanted to accentuate these bubbles and I wanted some to be more of a greenish sea tone and some to be more of a deeper blue, almost turquoise type look. Um, yeah, so I just gave it a good mix. I just went with what I felt looked good. So that's what this next section is, me playing with these bubbles and just relaxing and playing with my with my crayons. <laughs> And I'm dipping my um, finger in my mason jar of water there so that I could, you know, create that look, that shading, and develop more color around the bubbles. Now I'm using this light blue color just to bring in an, um, another dimension of blue, a softer blue color.
and now I'm going over with my um, water brush to add a little bit more detail with the fine line brush to work that color a little bit more to really accentuate you know the the circles of the bubble and here I'm testing out the you know where my mermaid is going to be placed I'm sorry if you could hear that noise in the background they're doing work I believe next door so I'm not sure if you could hear that but that's what's happening now I decided to go in with my um, gelatos because I love these two colors together uh, there's I don't think there is a color listed for that greenish um, blue color but I did mix it with this deeper blue tone and it just came out perfectly so I decided that that was how I was going to color in the rest of my canvas using those gelatos so I just go over the edges knowing that I'm going to work the color from the outside in using my spray and it's just water using the water and my finger to push along the color and I love the I love the way that that looks and I really appreciated how easy that was <laughs> you know to work the gelatos with your finger And I like the contrast of that particular color bluish green that I created there against the colors of my bubbles and then um, I took this brown gelato and for the bottom of my canvas where the ocean floor would be um, I used it there and then I did some along the side sides because I knew I was going to frame out my canvas with a, a darker accentuating color and then I gave the sides of my canvas some color because you can't if you're hanging this up you can't forget the sides of your canvas so I did go over them with some of this brown gelato And I just play with the color until I feel like, you know, it looks it looks good for me. And there's the ocean floor. And actually I should have somehow created more light coming in from the top of the canvas, you know, so that it would look like she was working towards the surface of the water. But I'm just not there yet. <laughs> So now it's time to try to adhere my mermaid and oh first I'm going to look for my title. I knew that there was a wooden piece with the word explore and these are all wooden pieces from the mixed media section at Michaels and there's um, seashells and um, sea turtles and seahorses and words. And these are just awesome wood veneers and you can do anything with them you can paint them emboss them which is what I did with mine now first I'm going to um, oh, I guess first I'm going to add some white splatters <laughs> using my white acrylic paint I, I felt like it needed a little bit of white and then I'm going to take the leftover paint from that white acrylic paint and I'm going to paint over my word explore with this little sponge dauber and then while that paint is wet I'm going to take my Queen's Gold um, embossing powder from Ranger I don't think Ranger makes this particular gold embossing powder anymore but they do have some gorgeous gold tone embossing powders but in, anyway I'm going to sprinkle some embossing powder along my word while the paint is still wet so that I can um, emboss the gold and it would my word would just have hints of gold on it you'll see came out very cool see although in the end I do add more embossing gold embossing powder to it um, and then I thought I wanted to highlight the white of this word more with more acrylic paint so that was that's what I was doing 
So I, th I set that to the side. And now I'm going to give you a closer look at my canvas. <laughs> and now, see, I added more gold to, and I also did some seashells here and I did those with the gold embossing powder and also peacock embossing powder from Lindy Stamp Gang. Now I'm going to use my Liquitex um, matte medium, gel medium, I'm sorry, to adhere my mermaid. And see that orange piece there? Yeah, that's the mermaid's hair. <laughs> In the end, I think she's cute. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> But yeah, I, I really felt like she needed hair um, swirling behind her. So that was what I could do. So it was kind of tricky adhering her to the canvas because the canvas does have some dimension to it with that modeling paste, even though um, a lot of those bubbles kind of fell, the modeling paste kind of fell. But it was tricky. But using um, my matte medium or my gel medium, from Liquitex, I was able to adhere her, and you can see the hair, her hair flowing behind her, or that's what it's meant to look like. <laughs> and now I'm using the gel medium to adhere my wood veneer explorer up in the top right hand corner. And then I went over the whole canvas with the gel medium sort of to seal it, to seal some of that color in. And then I decided these art stones that Tiffany's, um, she's Tiffany Solorio here on YouTube. Oh, she's a brilliant mixed media artist. <laughs> anyway, she had sent me these um, art stones and I wanted to try them as my ocean floor and I think they came out really cool um, in the end I think it looks really cool but I think these would have been easier for me to adhere if I had mixed them with a little bit more gel medium that's what I did I mixed them with some gel medium and I'm just kind of using my palette knife to spread them along and there you have it that's how it came out and then I decided to add gel medium throughout my canvas and then go over it with some of this Tim Holtz Distress Glitter just to add a little bit of shimmer to that water. Add some over here, add some along the ocean floor, and in the end it does show up. I don't know if it shows up in the picture so much, but in real life it does show up and it looks, it looks very cool. I do like that effect. I'm shaking off the excess glitter. So this is what we have so far. Now I'm using my Faber-Castell big brush uh, pit pens to add color and um, highlight some areas of my canvas like you know the mermaid's body with that peach color, that flesh tone color. And then do you see how I created the mermaid's halter top with the little strings there. Um, I knew I wanted to add some rhinestones or little pearls to her little top there. So I found these little halfback pearls to add. And I thought that came out really super cute to add to her top. And then I was going to add more throughout the canvas, but I thought twice. Now I'm I'm just going to accent, you know, do some accents around the bubbles. Um, I didn't show you but here I'm using my watercolors, just that that $5 set of watercolors from Michaels, you know, that we all purchased. Um, Artist Loft watercolors, I think they are, I'm not sure. But anyway, that's where I'm getting my color here to um, accent around the bubbles and in the um, art stones and in my mermaid's hair just adding some extra color to highlight different areas and I was trying to get it so that her hair looked kind of swirly and curly but I just wasn't getting it in the end I think I think she's cute 
and I will continue to practice my mermaids. <laughs> I'm sorry you can't see the very top of the canvas there, but I was just adding more color. There you go. And I was just trying to, you know, add more color to her halter top and and such. And now I'm going to go over the um, frame of my canvas with the Prima Oil Pastel uh, crayon just to give it a darker outline, frame, frame it out a little bit. And I am going to um, wet it just to smudge out some of the color. And I really like the way that that looks. All in all, this canvas was very relaxing to um, to create. Frustrating, very frustrating at times, <laughs> but all in all, relaxing. And here I decided to highlight my bubbles with my, uh, this is my Molotow acrylic paint pen in white and it's a fine line. And I picked it up at Hobby Lobby. They're on clearance right now. And my white gel pen that I normally use um, wasn't working because a lot of a lot of the color on my canvas is from the oil pastels, and I found that my gel pen does not work over the oil pastels. So I'm using my white acrylic paint pen just to highlight those bubbles. And then I'm highlighting my mermaid as well. I'm giving her some doodle accents. <clears throat> and I'm liking the way that this looks. I did outline the outside of the, my word explore as well. And I was trying to incorporate how I could incorporate these shells that came out so nice. But I felt like they were just too big. Um, so I didn't include them in this canvas. But there will be a project very soon where I will incorporate them. Now I'm just adding more color. Just trying to get it to look... You know... <laughs> Adding a little bit more shading. And there you go. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. I know this was a long one, but I wanted to take you along on my process. So here are the close-up photos, and I'm sure I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.